Have you heard of Univer Video, your platform for Christian content? With Univer Video, it's like this. You simply subscribe and you'll have full access to our Christian content from around the world, including the UK and in English. Our main English church services are available for live streaming on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings. You can revisit the Sunday morning services anytime and anywhere through Univer Video. There is also the chance to watch our live transmissions, which take place every single day from the Temple of Solomon. There are some meetings that provide simultaneous translation to English. New to Univer Video are the live pastors' meetings in English with Bishop Macedo every Thursday. If you miss it, you can catch up at any time and from anywhere. If you think that's all, how about watching transmissions from over nine countries and in six different languages? All this Christian content is exclusively for you and your family right here on Univer Video. All you have to do is sign up. Already excited to get on board? Well, we have some exciting news for you. For the first 2,000 subscriptions, there is a promotional price of 50% off the annual cost. This means that you get to make a one-off payment of £32.50 for the year and get all this content with no hassle of monthly payments. So, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Simply go to univervideo.com online or download the application on your mobile device and complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card at the ready and simply choose your terms of payment. Before you know it, you'll be up and running. Subscribe today and discover the best Christian content online. Univer Video, a universe of Christian content within your reach. Radio. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Be Inspired. Today, Thursday, is the day that we use our faith in order to bless our family. That's right. You know that after our, our own salvation, our relationship with God, the next thing that we, we know is, is important in our lives is family. And which is why today we want to use our faith to bless your marriage, to bless your children, you children, to bless your parents, to bless those relatives right now that maybe they are suffering. In fact, maybe you are suffering while you watch your family members go through what they're going through. Like sometimes you sometimes feel the pain of that relative that is suffering from depression, that is suffering with an addiction. You almost feel, you know, you feel for them. You feel what, what they're going through has been also taking a toll upon your life. It has brought sadness to you. It, it, it hurts you to see them in that situation. And worst of all, not being able to do anything for them. But that's when we have to turn to our Lord Jesus. We have to turn to our faith. Because for that, He gave us faith in order to bring into existence, into our lives, what does not exist. God gave us faith for that reason. And it may be difficult or complex. It's a, it's a battle because you think, Pastor, I don't have a problem believing. Now I believe. I'm in the faith. In fact, I've been praying for my family. I've been hoping that they come to Jesus. And they, I have relatives, they, they, don't, they don't listen. They're, they're not really accepting the invitation. I don't know what to do to convince them. If it, if it depended on me, I would have seen already my family all saved. And that's the, the battle sometimes having to use your faith even though you know you can't change the mind of that other person. But this is where our faith, together with our trust in God, in His Word, knowing that He has the power to transform them. He has the power to convince them, to change the mind, to change the heart, 
to break the heart of stone, even the one who is proud, even the one who's stubborn, who says, I'm never changing, I'm never stepping foot in, into any church or whatever, or things of that sort. God is able to, to break that heart of stone and transform it into a heart of flesh. The Holy Spirit has ways to, to, to speak, to, to, to transform in ways that we cannot. But this is why he, he needs you to use your faith. He needs you to be the one to believe and to trust and to not give up and to believe in the, in the promise of God that He said you will be saved and your family. So that's the reason why in few moments we are going to bless your family. As of now, I would encourage you to, maybe you can write the names now in the comment section here of the application, the Liberty Radio app, or if you're watching on your phone or on your computer, wherever you're watching from, type there in the comment section because the names that you write of your family, we will include them in this prayer. And if you say, Pastor, I don't wish to write their names, to disclose their names, but I'm, I have the photographs of my family, so keep them there close to you because you are also going to be interceding on their behalf. And you can, you can do it as if they were here, as if they were listening to this prayer. You're going to determine that God's power will visit them no matter where they are. And if you have your family living with you, you can also invite them, encourage them. If they accept to, be, to listen to the program, to take part in this program, to, to watch the program. So invite them to sit next to you and watch the, you know, the program together. Watch the testimonies that we're about to show right now of people that their families were blessed, their families were changed through the power of their faith. Okay? So determine that you are also going to be the next testimony. Why don't you also type there in the comment section, me and my family, we will be the next testimony. Okay? Let's watch now the first couple of testimonies and get ready very soon we're going to come back with a word of faith and also the prayer on behalf of your family. Let's watch. Recently, one of my neighbors came up to me and asked me that her son was going through a court case and she was very worried. So I, and if I could come with her to the court case and I said, yes, but Previously, before that, um, she had she told me about it, and I started putting everything to God and asking God to help me and guide me. And I've been praying for her as well, and she's been praying as well. We joined our face together, and we've been praying. And then the day of the case, I fasted, and as I got into the car, he was in the car, and I said, "Look, I said you need to fast." because this is the, the message that God gave me as well. So he fasted, and when we got there, just before we got to the court place um i made the prayer and i said god guide us as we got in inside um we went upstairs and we waited and then um god told me to just to get up and pray at the door so i prayed at the door of the courts where we were supposed to go in and hear the hearing and then as i was there um i asked god um to touch the heart of the judge. When the case was going, going, um, the judge turned around and said that um, he heard everything, everything that had to be said against my friend's son. And then he turned around and said, look, I've heard all this, but I'm not gonna sentence you because I want to get to know you. And I know only God himself could have done something like this. I thank God today that the mother is here and I know the son will be here as well. So I'm praising God and giving thanks to him. My mom do, doesn't like the church. So even when I started coming, she did everything like to stop me from coming. It got to the point where I was like, if I'm not coming here, I'm not going anywhere else. So she was like, that's fine. You can just stay at home. I used my faith and she started allowing me to come. Last week, Sunday, um, I think it was on the Saturday, she, she had the week off. So she was off on Sunday as well. So I was like, you know what? If I don't do it this week, then I don't know when next I'm going to have an opportunity to actually speak to her. On the Sunday morning, um, I was going there, I went to her room and I still went and said, oh, so what's going on? Like, I'm going, I want you to come with me. Like, I'm waiting for you. And she's like, oh, I'm not coming. I'm going to my own church, so forth and so on. And it got so bad to the point where I was literally nearly in tears. So I went before the altar that we um, used to, like, to make. And I remember just praying before that altar and saying, like, you've done this before. Like, you've done this 
for me like you've allowed me to come to the church god like this it was through faith like and these faith that people are testifying people are saying i want to see that faith because if you are who you say you are then i need to see it i remember coming to just the service and i was sitting about then i was just turning back you know looking at the time and i remember after the service i think it was the assistant um matilda pulled me back and she's like oh your mom came and i passed when i tell you i was nearly in tears like i was nearly in tears like and i went around telling everybody my mom came my mom came and <laughs> it was Pastor, she it was she joy. She, it, it got to the point we had such a big, like we had an argument. Literally, as Pastor, I tell you, I was in tears. Like no one would even imagine I was in tears when I came to church because I was smiling, but I was nearly in tears, Pastor. So God, honor your faith. Hundred percent, Pastor. What great testimonies we had! Pamela from Edmonton, and also Melissa from Peckham. You see how strong her reaction in front of her, this, this battle that she was facing as far as her faith. You know, she wanted to, to show how her faith has been benefiting her. She's been happy since she's been attending the Universal Church and her faith has, made, has done well to her. And obviously, this can be a battle for many people when you expect that as you're doing well, you, you've come to church, you, you found where Jesus is, where you, you learn the truth, and you see how the Word of God is bearing fruit in your life. And sometimes it's, it's a problem when you expect your family to, 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 to understand you, to back you up, to encourage you, or to even be happy for you. But then the battle comes in when you see the opposite, when you see that perhaps that person is, is offended or is not happy with you going to church as you were hearing Melissa struggle. But you see how the Holy Spirit is honoring her faith because she kept at it. She kept saying, and she was firm not to be disrespectful to her mom, not to be disrespectful or fighting her or trying to contradict her family, but rather putting first her relationship with God and God honoring her because now even her mom, she, to her surprise, she was able to see her mom coming to church. Congratulations for your faith. Melissa, continue to persevere. And to all of you as well who have family members that perhaps today they don't see the benefit of you going to church, although they, they see the, the change in you because if they've seen how you used to be and you are different after you have received Jesus in your life, so it's not a matter of are they, have they noticed. They, they notice, but you can be sure sooner or later the Spirit of God will do His work within them. But you cannot let the snare of you wanting to see your family saved and not seeing them correspond to your faith in a positive way, don't let that snare trap you. Don't let yourself be entrapped by the devil's snares uh, using family. And we're going to talk about that in a few moments right after we watch now this third and final testimony we're going to see tonight. Pay close attention to these two sisters, right? These two sisters on how the Holy Spirit, the, He has caused such a great change in their family, in their relationship as sisters, and I'm sure it's going to bless you. You determine as well, me and my family, we will be the next testimony. Hello, my name is Nancy from Hammersmith. My name is Eunice from Hammersmith. And before coming to the UCKG, I could say that my relationship with my sister was that we weren't really close. You know, there were things going on within her life that I didn't know about because I wasn't really attentive to her needs. I was there for her, let's say, if she asked for something. But when things were going on with her from deep within, I didn't know what was really going on because I guess I was more focused on myself instead of being the big sister. I would see her just going out with her friends. She would be more close with her friends, like when she was going out clubbing parties and I would just be there you know like at home I wouldn't really have a relationship with her um, I didn't feel confident to talk to her about anything so after we came we understood the value of family and what it really means to be a good family member not just to be there physically you know in the same room as your family member on the on different devices just spending your time on other things but to actually understand what your family needs from you and to intercede on their behalf so as we came we we were praying together we did purposes of faith as well for our families so every time we would pray for our families we'd be there believing that our families can change but also that our relationship 
would also grow stronger. We become a lot closer, yeah. we speak more, we get along, even though she does annoy me sometimes. <laughs> we do get along and it's been great just to have yeah. a little sister that I know that she's transformed and that I don't need to worry about her in that sense, but I know that I'm there for her whenever she needs me. Exactly, so it's like we've put God in the center of our relationship, like um, our sisterhood, if that makes sense. So with God, we've allowed ourselves to transform within ourselves. And now because we've transformed within ourselves, we have, it's showed outwardly. So like now we are more closer, more united, so yeah. Thank you, Nancy and Eunice from Hammersmith. What a great testimony. You see how strong, when we put Jesus first in our life, the transformation that, you know, occurs inside of us, obviously our family will benefit from it. You notice how perhaps these two sisters, they were, they were distant to the point where one of them, Eunice, I believe, she was struggling within her, within her own self and Nancy being her sister, living in the same house, but not really knowing what she was going through. And that happens a lot nowadays. Everybody goes to their room. Everybody in, in a family sometimes are there, you know, even though you live together, but they are not connected. They're connected with, you know, the internet. They're connected with social media. They're connected even with people in a different part of the world, chatting, talking, you know, just spending, wasting time on things that are futile. When people in your own home, people within that house, they need love, communication, they need someone to talk to, and they have people right there next to them. And that's not happening. There's a big gap, a big separation. Too many families we're seeing nowadays are living that way. Sometimes within that same house, we have now people that are depressed. And sometimes right underneath the noses of many, you know, many family members, they don't see what's happening. They don't know what's going on with them. Sometimes strangers know more about their relative than their own parents, their own siblings. And that's just, that's just, you know, revolting because how can we accept that? How can that be? How can we, uh, but, but how, how am I supposed to know what's in the mind, in the heart of our family? And that's the thing. You see, Nancy, by having an experience with God herself, she was able to become, you know, that sister that is caring, that it w is now thinking about her. As she said, you know, it's impossible to not have sometimes one annoying the other. There's no way around that, you know, but because of the change she experienced, both of them have experienced, so they were able to now, you know, show the love that Jesus gives to us. They were able to no longer be thinking just about their own pleasures, their own desires. When we put Jesus first, it can make us to be the husband we're supposed to be, the wife that you're supposed to be, the father that you that God wants you to be, the mom that God wants you to be, the child, the sibling that God wants you to be. That's right. When we put, when we prioritize our relationship with God, you personally, you and God, so then obviously, automatically, the same you're going to see, you're going to see a change within the way that you treat your family, the way that you see them, the way you deal with them with wisdom, with patience, with love, with respect, with forgiveness, just as Jesus forgave you. And which leads me to this next, this passage I want to share with you that is very important because to some people, what I'm going to tell you here right now has been a snare in many people's lives, in many families, or rather the snare, it has to do with family. It's not to say that our family is a snare, but Let's say that the snare involves family. It involves, and we all have families, right? We've all, we're born into a family. And, and the devil knows how, how, let's say, how much we love our family or how emotionally involved we are with family. And that could either be a very, you know, God wants to use it for our good. Satan want to, wants to use it for, you know, for, for bad things to happen. And it has been a snare for many people. And this is how we can avoid this snare, look what Jesus said here in Matthew 10, verse 37 and 38. Read with me, please, there on the screen. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter 
more than me is not worthy of me. This is Jesus speaking, right? And then he says in verse 38, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. These are strong words of our Lord Jesus. But what he's saying here, he didn't say, and he's not mentioning that we ought to not love our family, right? In fact, one of the commandments of the Ten Commandments is that we may love our, you know, we may honor our father and our mother. We, we may make them proud. We may obey them, respect them, right? So to not love them would be, would not be accurate, would, would be wrong, would be to interpret these words in the wrong way. But when he says, when Jesus said that we, the one who loves basically their family more than they love Jesus, more than they love God, so they are not worthy of him. Which basically means that we have to make sure in our hearts what are our priorities. When it and we have to have that very clear because sometimes this is what the snare could be. Because you love your family, because you love them dearly, you hold them to your heart, you know, you want to see your family saved, you know, you want to see your, your, your obviously your family, you want to see the well-being of their souls, their lives. And Satan knows that. Satan knows you have a desire to see your family well. Or in some people, they've been so emotionally attached to their families that sometimes they have not measured, you know, the what they're capable of doing in order to please their family. For example, you have moms or parents that say about their children, my kids, they're my world, they're my treasure. You know, some moms even, or, or dads, they go to the extent of saying, these kids, you know, they're everything. If I lose them, you know, I, I'd rather die. I'd rather, you know, I don't have a reason to live. You know, God forbid anything happens to them. And, and indeed, we don't want anything wrong to happen to our children. But some people, they, they've gone to the point where the love that they have for their family is even, let's say, higher, greater, to the point where they would be willing to do whatever to please their family, even if it means displeasing God, even if it means where your relationship with God is interrupted, you know, because you have to put your family in priority. You have to put your family first. And that is a snare. That is a problem. And it's not even intelligent because how can we expect our family to be united, to be filled with, let's say, the love of God, to be saved, if we don't prioritize our relationship with God? We won't have to give what we don't have for ourselves. We know that where we receive guidance, wisdom, patience, strength, self-control, guidance to help our family to raise children or to bless our spouse or for the, for the one who is single to make, to make the right choices in order to have a family of their own, to have a marriage blessed by God. How can they have that without having God in first place? You know, so it's a mistake when you see people, they put their love life before God. They put the fact that they say, no, I need to get married. And God, if you don't bless me in marriage, if, if I'm going to stay single, so, uh, you know, that's, that's the deal breaker. If nothing happens very soon, I'm going to give up. I'm going to leave the church. I'm not going to continue. Why should I continue in faith? Or in some marriages as well, where the spouse is today fighting for their family, their spouse to, to join them in the presence of God. And to the point where now they have even began to put first their spouse. You know, well, my spouse says, I can't, you know, I can't be going to this church, can't be doing this, can't be doing that, and I know I have to listen to them. I'm not saying that you don't have to listen to your family, you don't have to respect them, you don't have to do the good things that they ask you to do. But, my dear friend, Jesus said it very clearly. If we love our family more than we love Him, so we are not worthy of Him. And you see how this is a snare. The devil knows that, and sometimes he may try to use your, you know, the emotional side where your family can say things like that. If you go to that church, so, you know, you're not my family anymore. Sometimes I've, in the past, I remember hearing that from relatives that, you know, siblings, relatives, you know, the distant family telling us, you know, you don't come anymore to the family gatherings. And it's almost like you're not part of this family anymore. And these words are hurtful. Obviously, we're human beings. 
We didn't want to disappoint them, but we understood that what we received from Jesus restored our family, our heart, brought salvation, brought peace within us. So how can, how can we turn away from our Lord Jesus? So always prioritizing salvation, prioritizing God. And of course, as a result, sooner or later, many of those relatives, that some relatives today, they tell, they tell me, you made the right choice. You did the right thing. In the beginning, they didn't see it that way. You know, especially when I, I entered to do the work of God, to serve God, to save souls. Many of them said, you know, are you sure? What are you doing? You're throwing your life away. You know, you, you could do so many things. You know, you can have a, such a, a you know, great career. And I said, no. You know, I, I didn't allow those words to, 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 you know, to manipulate me emotionally, where I felt like I, I had to please them. No, before anything, I have to please God. And of course, when we please God, when we put God first, when we show Him that He is first in our lives, there isn't anything that He won't do. He is able to transform our families. It's like what happened to Abraham. Remember Abraham, when God asked him for Isaac, it's not that God didn't want him to be a father. In fact, He, want, he didn't really want him to be a father of a child, but of a great nation. But He did not want Abraham to, to think or to have his heart on Isaac, on his son, above, above his God. No, God had to be first. And then the love towards his son Isaac. And then everything else. So this is the way, this is the, the order that we have, to, we have to put it in our life. And by doing this, you are, you are being, you're setting yourself free from the snares of the devil. So don't allow situations that happen in your family to cause you to put God in second place. No. Fight. There are some things that you do have to stand up and fight for. And your salvation, your faith is definitely that one thing that you cannot let anyone, no matter who it is, to interfere with your relationship with Jesus. And tomorrow, those who fight with you, argue with you, they don't agree with you, tomorrow they're going to see the fruit of your, of your sacrifice to your God. And your family will join you, will also serve the Lord. But you have to persevere. Don't fall for this snare. Let's love God before and above everything else, okay? And all other things shall be added unto you, okay? Grab now the pictures of your family. Grab now uh, uh, the, the, the garment that might represent your relative there. You want to present it to Jesus now. It's the moment of prayer. We're going to pray for these who have been written in the comment section here. It's time to bless our family. Let's use our faith. Call your family if they live with you. Call them now to where you're watching the program. And let's talk to God. My Lord, my God and Father, we are here before your presence and I unite my faith with every listener, every person, Lord, who is now interceding on behalf of their family, but not only of their family, but also, Lord, to present their lives to you. And I pray for those who perhaps were falling for the snare, the snare where this person, Lord, was putting before you their family member, the love for their relative. And don't get me wrong, Lord, we understand. Those who have ears, they have heard and understood that you want our families to be saved and for us to love our families. But now where we've, we've set our hearts on them, that we are so attached to them or attached to the blessings that involve family, that involve marriage, or for this person who is single, that their dream is to have their spouse, and we know, Lord, this is your will, that they be fulfilled and happy in all aspects. But not, my Lord, where we fall, where this becomes a trap that the devil is using, my Lord, to deceive, to have us anxious, worried, depressed, sad, not trusting you, almost doubting and almost at the point of giving up in faith. No, my Lord, tied up. If anyone was falling for that snare, so right now as they pray, they are being set free, Lord, through your word. 
And we want to do exactly what you said, Lord, to love you above our families, to love you more than our own spouse, to love you more than our own children or parents, because, Lord, no one has, none of them have done what you have done for us. You took, my Lord, the, the cup of wrath for our salvation to save us. That's greater, Lord, than even the love of our own parent. Yes, it's true, my Father. And, and we know and we thank you for our parents or those who've had parents or relatives who've cared for us. But above all, Lord, you have done and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our salvation. That's why we choose to love you above all else, above everyone else. And in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for that reason, that as this person puts you first, you also will take care of their families. You also take care of their relationship with their children, with their spouse, their parents. Yes, my Lord, you transform, my God. You are the one that are able to convince and touch the hearts of those who are still blind, who are still far away from you. We unite our faith to pray, Lord, that these families be touched by you. Save this family. Yes, my God, that you heal the wounds between this husband and wife. Their, what their, their relationship that has been in turmoil, that has been suffering for many years. May, may they be healed from the pain of the bad words and, Lord, the fights and arguments that have perhaps, my Lord, torn them apart. We pray that your spirit now unite them. Unite, Lord, the relationship between this parent and their children. Oh, my Father, we pray for the miracle that you do what only you can do for this family, my God. Those who parents who have maybe a child who's been in trouble with the law and this parent has not been able to find a way how they can have their child, my Lord, turn from the wrong path to leave the bad company. We pray, Holy Spirit, that right now, wherever they are, you convince them, you speak to them, Lord, and you set them free. We bless all families, Lord Jesus, right now. Those who are sick, those who've been addicted, let them be set free from all demons, all evil spirits that have tormented them. And may these families now, my Lord, be blessed by you. Every name written in the comment section, every photograph, Lord, be blessed. Every garment that was separated, Lord, to be consecrated, I bless it now so that when this relative wears this, this article of clothes, my Lord, they, when they use this shirt, this blouse, whatever, they, they touch this garment, Lord, let them be touched by your spirit. We give all families to you. We bless all the single. We bless all the couples. And you who believe, say, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Say, my life, my family, my love life is in God's hands. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Take a deep breath, dear friend. You are blessed and your family is blessed as well. Amen. Listen, have the assurance that the Holy Spirit is working in your life. As you put God first, He is your everything. Be sure that your God, He will provide you who are single with the right person. In your marriage, He's going to bless your marriage. He's going to save your family, your children. They will have a turnaround. Trust in God. Obey God. Put Him first and you will see all things will be added unto you. And speaking of God setting us free from snares, this coming Sunday we have the, a special day in all universal churches around the world. It will be the Sunday where God's strong hand will be breaking the snare of evil. And this is going to be for two people, two, two types of people, two groups. Those who have fallen into the snare of evil and God's strong hand will set them free. And obviously for us, for those of you who say, no, I'm standing firm in my faith. God, he's going to help you so that your eyes may be watchful, that our eyes may be watchful so that we do not fall for the snares of the devil. We don't fall for the temptations that every day we go through. But it doesn't mean we have to fall. Jesus will give you eyes that you are vigilant, that you do what he said, that you watch and pray. Tomorrow, Friday, as a matter of fact, pick up, as you can see right there on your screen, Pick up a leaflet like that one that has there, you see right there, the string attached to it. You're going to wear this string as you can see here mine. I don't know if you can see it from there, but I have mine on my wrist here. As you attach it to your wrist or you tie it to your wrist, sorry, we are going to be cutting this, this string this coming Sunday at the entrance. Arrive early before 10 a.m. from 9.30 until 5 minutes to 10 a.m. We'll be at the door ready to cut this, this, this string from your hand, your wrist, and when we do so, we're going to be determining that 
God will be cutting all the snares of evil, okay? Don't miss it this coming Sunday. We'll be together in this faith. Here at 232 Seven Sisters Road, N43 and X. You are our guest to be here with us at 10 a.m. and in all universal churches around the world, okay? And don't forget tomorrow Friday to bring back the old rose that you had, that you brought to church last week to be blessed. Bring a brand new one and join us tomorrow for the chain of prayer of the blessed rose and we'll be determining your, your spiritual cleansing, deliverance for you and your family, okay? May God bless you. Have a good night and we'll see you next time. If you would like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details as provided, through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website, or via Pingit with the details provided. Thank you for your help.